Welcome to the 2020-21 Lone Star Conference Online Basketball Media Day. I'm Russ Howard from Ram TV and Angelo Sports, and I'm joined, of course, by Ram Head Basketball Coach Cinco Boone. Coach, welcome. Thank you. It's basketball season. It's finally time. It is indeed. So let's go ahead and talk about the elephant in the room, get that out of the way, and then we'll move on. COVID. What a heck of a summer and fall, and actually going all the way back to the end of your last season it's been. Yeah, I mean, you know, I just still feel bad for the seniors that we had and, and just that whole team. Uh, I thought we were playing good basketball uh, at the end of the year and to be rewarded with uh, an at-large bid to the NCAA uh, tournament, mm -hmm. we were hoping to go up there and make a run. You know, we were on the bus, uh, got just about to Big Spring and uh, they called and said that it was canceled and uh, that was a bummer. And then uh, recruiting from the living room and uh, not getting to go and burn up the highways and, and go and see a lot of kids, just a lot of stuff over the phone. And, um, you know, guys came to summer school in the month of July. It was weird. It was uh, socially distanced. It was masked up. Uh, and that's the way we've been all fall in the preseason. And, you know, we're about 18 or 19 practices in. Of course, some guys in practice some days, some guys out. Uh, we, but we've had a, a, a good time, you know, a good preseason, I guess you could say, of making it through the best way we can. All right. So let's talk a little bit about that, and then we'll get into a little bit about last season and this season. Um, COVID, how has that impacted? You already mentioned recruiting. You had to recruit from the living room. Couldn't do it on the road. How has that impacted off-season workouts? You know, I think the thing that impacts the most is just everybody's mental being. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, not knowing when the schedule is going to be, who are we playing, when are we playing, um, that, to me, that, that's been the, the biggest thing. Obviously, testing, uh, the mandatory testing, uh, you know, nobody likes that thing being run up your nose. Um, but, <laughs> you know, it just proves that our guys are willing to do whatever it takes to get to play. And um, it's just the time that we're in. And uh, in terms of practice, um, like I said, we've been able to move forward pretty well, uh, fortunately for us. And uh, guys have, have uh, done, a, done a great job. I mean, I, I can't. It's hard enough on me as the coach mentally um, to not know when your first game is going to be and just to trust and have faith that it's going to happen. Right. And the, the guys have done a great job of just, you know, still bringing, bringing it every day. Right. And, and you don't have to beg them to work hard, even though they don't see that first game on the website yet. You know, so I've been very, very impressed just with uh, their attitudes and, and their day to day and, and uh, really, really appreciate them for what they've done. Yep. So coming off a 20 and 8 season last year, you went 15 to 7 in the conference, finished second in the division, made it the second round of the conference tournament, and as you said, earned a regional bid. Let's translate that into 2020, 2021. You lost four starters. Um, you have Paul Williams, uh, Byron Edwards, a couple others coming back. Um, how are you looking so far? What do you, how do you like your chances so far? Sure. Um, I, I think this might be one of our best teams that we've had since I've been uh, here at Angelo State. Collectively, um, you know, we still have talent. Uh, assistant coaches have done an outstanding job, uh, as I say, recruiting from the living room. They got good players. Um, I think we got depth. And then we've got some guys, uh, I kind of think for the first time uh, since I've been here that We've brought in some, some four-year guys. We've redshirted them, and we've brought them up uh, and tried to get them some experience by redshirting, practicing with us. And, and we've got a couple of those guys that have been in our program for a while now that, you know, you've seen them on the bench, and you've seen them uh, kind of slowly starting to bloom in practice. And now you're going to get to see them, as I really have been impressed with some of the stuff they're doing. They're going to get minutes, and, and I'm excited just about the collective group. Uh, I mean, you've got to be excited about Paul Williams to have a point guard uh, back at, uh, of, of his experience in the league. Uh, Byron Edwards has maybe been our, our, our most impactful player uh, on both ends of the floor in, in practice. Celicia Haya, I mean, you're going to see uh, a, a new guy with a, a new confidence that, that uh, he didn't have last year. Um, you know, so, so those are some of the returners. And then uh, the recruiting class is a mixture of four-year transfers um, and junior college transfers and, and – uh, I could go on and on about each one of them, but we'd be here all day. So, but uh, we're, we're excited. Uh, I'm not sure where we got picked, but um, I think this group, assuming that COVID gives us uh, as many games as possible, I think this group will have a fighting chance when it's all said and done. All right. You know, I will say this. I'm going to go out on a limb and say this, but I think that the conference we play in is the toughest in D2 
if and it probably stacks up against some of those in you know D1 as well. Talk a little bit about playing in the Lone Star Conference itself. Well, I'm glad you asked that. This morning, um, I was admiring my gray hairs in the mirror, <laughs> and I got to thinking, where, where did these come from? And then I got to thinking, well, it's, that's that's Lon Reisman right there in January of 2016, and that one right there is Nelson Haggerty. That one right there is uh, Sammy Walker. You know, that one right there has been Tom Brown. There's about 98 gray hairs in here uh, from Tom Brown. Um, but I, I just can't say enough about the, the coaching in this league and um, the, the players and, and obviously just the, the, you know, the Lone Star State and all the, you know, New Mexico. Like, I got to give them a shout out. Oklahoma, I mean, Arkansas. I mean, just what a great area that uh, great high school basketball is played and we have a great opportunity to dig in and, and get kids uh, from those areas. And then we, they compete at the collegiate level and, I agree. I think we're one of the top Division II conferences. I think every coach probably says that in every conference. But uh, night in and night out, it's just a battle. And if you're not prepared, if you're not watching tape, you're not scouting, um, and if you're not recruiting, you're not doing everything, then, then it's a, a recipe for disaster. You've got to work hard to, to earn every win that you get in this league. All right. So let's talk a little bit, um, backing up again, and I, and I hate to keep mentioning this, but it is a fact of life to COVID. Um, going forward, uh, we don't know what, A, what the schedule's gonna be yet. We don't know attendance limitations or restrictions yet. How will it be if indeed we have to play in front of empty stadiums or empty arenas, as it were, how would that, how does that impact, you know, the whole mentality of the team? Sure, I mean, I think one of the best things that uh, has taken place so far is that we've seen pro sports with no fans. I mean, we, we watched the bubble scenario in the NBA. Of course, that is the ultimate, what our guys are going to watch is the NBA, and they played with, with no fans. Right. So if they can do it, we can do it, you know. And um, will it be weird? Will it be awkward? I don't think we'll have the same kind of figures in the stands that the NBA had, like, uh, <laughs> to make it look like there was a, a crowd. But I, I just think guys want to compete. And I think the NCAA did the right thing by giving these guys their year back, um, you know, regardless of, of how uh, the season turns out. And, um, it, but I mean, it's just going to be an adjustment. And, and to me, the team that, you know, just mentally doesn't let anything affect them. I've tried to tell our guys just over and over again, like, you know, um, if there's no fans in the stands, if there is uh, some days we have 10 guys on our roster and some days we have 15 and some days we have eight, I mean, we just have to roll with it. And um, practice times will be weird. I mean, the scenario that we're looking at, we're going to play teams in a bubble scenario where you're going to play them back to back times. It's just all going to be an adjustment in the team that doesn't panic or get like just too weirded out by the fact that it's different, I think is going to have the advantage. And, um, I just, to me, I don't think that's anything you can practice. You just have to put it out on the table and discuss it and try to get them as ready for it as you can get. All right, and that's where that maturity, you know, that, that you brought in that will, will balance off nicely the youth as well. So anything else you'd like to add? You know, I'm just excited about this team. Uh, they, they've been a lot of fun to be around. Like I said, to be able to have the mentality that they've had during what I consider such a, just a tough time, you know, for, for everybody across the world, really. And, uh, um, they've, they've really just, uh, I, I think they got great things coming for them. And uh, like I say, hopefully, fingers crossed, COVID gives us uh, a chance. And to all uh, the Ram fam, hopefully you can come out and watch them because you, you're going to like this team. And uh, we look forward to competing this year. All right. That's Coach Cinco Boone. I'm Russ Howard, Angelo Sports Ram TV. Thank you for joining us on the 2020-21 Lone Star Conference Online Media Men's Basketball Day. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget, season starts when the schedule gets finalized, and we'll see you then. Take care. God bless.